I have a dream that I would like to share that was given as edification for the body of Christ, and it also includes a gospel warning. Uh, in the description box, I will link two videos, one that includes a full and detailed explanation of the gospel, and one that discusses what it means to abide with Christ. Now let's get right into the dream communication. I picked up a brown folder and opened it. I looked up symbolism of the color brown and I found this. I actually felt that this was the meaning before I looked it up. Now a folder is something that holds important information. Inside, there were two folded papers, both paper clipped, one on each side, so they opposed each other. This symbolizes war. The first paper I unfolded, which means something is being revealed, had drawings on it that had a winter and Christmas theme to it. I knew that they were Russian drawings. I then unfolded the other paper from the opposite side of the folder, and it had typical American winter and Christmas themes drawn on it, but it had the word Christians printed in large, bold letters in red across the top of the paper. The red color symbolizes the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Here is where the gospel warning comes in. He is stressing this color in the dream because his blood atonement is key to our reconciliation to God the Father. It is his blood that brings us near and atones for all our sin, for our entire lifetime. And Jesus is the only mediator between us and the Father. There are many who believe in a false gospel that relies on more than his blood for forgiveness of sin. This is a destructive doctrine. It is of faith plus works of righteousness for forgiveness of sins. The true gospel is faith alone in the blood of Jesus for complete lifetime atonement of sin. After believing, there is no striving. The grace of God relieves us from this. As Jesus emphasizes in this dream, true born-again believers who trust only in the blood atonement of Jesus for their salvation will be raptured or caught up into the clouds alive with Jesus at the time this war begins. The rapture and resurrection event is discussed in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 54. As we know from Scripture, those who are born again are not appointed to suffer God's wrath. Therefore, all resurrected and raptured believers will be in heaven in their glorified bodies before the beginning of the seven-year tribulation time period, also called the time of Jacob's or Israel's trouble. If you are someone who is hearing opposing gospel doctrines, please know that the scripture truly tells us that we cannot be saved by putting our faith in ourselves, in our works, our religious rituals, or anything or anyone else other than Jesus. And this includes after we have heard the gospel. This is of the utmost importance. In other words, if you hear the gospel, but you continue to believe that you must maintain your salvation through your works, and that God has not forgiven you of all of your sin, past, present, and future, then you have believed in vain and you are not trusting in Jesus with your whole heart. Paul warns of this in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2. We are in the very last days, and there are many false teachers. Please read the scripture carefully. And do not let them confuse you and steal you away from the simple truth. Think about that word steal. Jesus said that is what the thief 
came to do. In all of Paul's epistles, he began with the saying, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter and Jude also began their letters with mentioning peace and grace. The gospel is peace, not fear. What is the very last verse in the Bible? It says, The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. End quote. It is a statement of definitive truth. As a matter of fact, the very first verse in the Bible tells us that God created everything. So you see, God does everything and he gives us his grace. And so that is the basis of the true gospel. As the only righteous one in this universe, Jesus completely conquered all sin. And there is not one thing that we, his imperfect, sinful creation can do in order to redeem ourselves from our sin nature and reconcile ourselves to God other than what we are commanded to do. And that is to obey the gospel and believe only, which means trusting only in Jesus. He said this in John 6, verse 29, and in John 3, verses 16 through 18. Paul warned the Galatians that they needed to be in the faith, that is, not trying to earn their justification by works of the law or any works. And he warned them that they were estranged from Christ and have fallen from grace if they incorrectly believed that way. You can read this in Galatians chapter 5. Obeying the word, obeying the gospel, means to trust only in the atoning work of Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of God. Why did he die on our behalf? Because we have an inherited sin nature through Adam, the first man. Jesus is our high priest who made eternal intercession for us. And he is our lamb, our sacrifice, innocent and blemish-free. The new covenant, an everlasting covenant, is in his blood, not in our righteousnesses, which are like filthy rags. Everlasting life is a gift we are given by God. We do not earn it. We aren't righteous enough to earn our salvation, and we are not righteous enough to maintain our salvation. After we believe in Jesus, we have nothing further to prove to God. His Holy Spirit will sanctify and justify us. He gives us the righteousness of Jesus. So please do not believe in vain and continue to rely on your own perceived self-righteousness. You are in corruptible flesh. You have no righteousness. You need full redemption. Jesus took care of all of it. Trust in him and become forever sealed by his Holy Spirit. You are then born again, a new creation in Christ. All has passed away and all has become new. And you will be a child of God. He will never leave you or forsake you. This full trust comes from a humble heart. There can be no pride in oneself. There are many warnings in scripture about pride. God exalts the humble and brings low the proud. Let your boasting be in the Lord, not in your flesh. Jesus does not need our help with defeating sin, death, and Satan. He does not need our help in reconciling us to the Father. 
He does it all. And he fulfilled the law on our behalf. He needed to because we cannot do it. We need to rely on him. Just like the Israelites had to rely on God for victory in battle. As long as they put their full trust in him, he fought for them and gave them victory and protection. Just like Jesus does for us. The message of this dream is this. War is coming to American soil. Seemingly during the winter or Christmas season. At that time, the resurrection of the dead in Christ and rapture of all born-again believers will occur. The rapture is not a reward for good discipleship. It is one event with the resurrection for all who are born again. Please do not believe on Jesus in vain so that you too can be with him forever, guaranteed, and be removed from the time of war, judgment, and testing that is soon coming. 